Hey y'all, Theo here. You probably know me from YouTube and from not using Veet, but I have some news for you. I actually use Veet a lot. As much as I love Next.js and I am stuck in the Webpack ecosystem as a result, I am constantly using Veet for basically anything it makes sense for. And I've been really, really impressed with my experience. When I started my company, Ping, we actually started originally as a create Veet app, still using React. And the only reason I moved to Next was because our builds were slowing down, not because Vite was slow, but because I was overusing the Vercel API directory and just had like 20 files, each being deployed to its own Lambda. And despite Vite being, I think like 80 times faster than Webpack for me at the time, the amount of time to deploy all of those Lambdas outside of Vite was slowing me down. So I ultimately had to move to Next for that. Regardless, I'm still constantly looking over the fence and finding lots of projects where V makes more sense than the tools I use for my websites. And we're here to talk about those today. Not Astra, which I love dearly and use V with all the time. Not Solid Start, not the hundreds of other tools that are built on top of V. We're actually going to talk about some things I built myself. And we're going to show off a CLI app that I'm actually using V to power. Yeah, wait, what? A CLI app? Isn't V for web apps? Well, it is. What if I told you that I built a web app into a CLI? This is a really interesting project, and by the time this talk is live, I will have open sourced it, so I'll be sure to link that somewhere too. Without further ado, let's dive into Webhook Thing. Well, what is Webhook Thing? I'll tell you quick. TLDR, Webhook Thing makes it easy to run your webhooks against your project locally. It's a project that my co-founder and I started because we were managing webhooks for a lot of projects, and it was annoying having crazy configs and postman just to run a quick JSON blob as a curl against an endpoint. So we made something to help manage those across our projects more easily. To use Webhook Thing, you run npx webhook thing at latest. If it's not already installed, it will install. And this will spin up our CLI and more importantly, our user interface for actually testing these things. Where is it getting these files from? This is where things start to get interesting. There's actually a folder in this project named dot thing. This folder has a bunch of JSON blobs in it in order to configure what gets run by webhook thing. But how does this web interface have access to that? Well, I actually have to have a server binding that native interface to this web interface so that I can access things on the native system layer through Node and get them here into my Webpack. So how do I actually build this interface and get V baked in here? Let's go through the code and I'll show you because I think this is a really cool solution. Before we do that, though, I do want to show one more thing, which is the actual output contents of the package. This is an empty project with Webhook thing installed in it. I did this because I want to show you the output code because you'll notice here there aren't a lot of sub modules. And if we look here, there are none. This depends on a lot of things. I'm using Fastify, I'm using Vite, I'm using React, I'm using all these different things. So where are they? This is another one of the fun pieces I'm gonna to touch on. We need to go through a few parts. First, we need to go through the CLI side. How do I actually spin up the CLI? What does it do? Then we have to go over the Vite part, which is the part that we're obviously here for, the web app that is being baked in. Then we're gonna go over how I pull these all together and bundle them and build a powerful package with it all. So first, let's take a look at the CLI code. So. Captain is a monorepo because it has a lot of different parts. We have a doc site, we have a marketing site, but more importantly, we have the CLI. The CLI is three pieces. There's the CLI core, which is the thing that runs your server and your CLI interface in your terminal. There's the web portion, which is the website that gets served as the interface between the two. And there's the CLI, which is the actual package that bundles everything together. So we're going to start with the core. So let's do it. We hop in here. We see I have a CLI app router, which is interesting. What, why do I have a router inside of the CLI? It's not a web router. It's an API router. It's a tRPC router in particular. If you're not already familiar with tRPC, the TLDR is it lets you write a function that's meant to be run on a server and then call that from anywhere with real simple type safety. It's like a minimal GraphQL. So here I have our on log call, which is a subscription. So this is actually a WebSocket. And now that I've defined this, it can take an input optionally. It's not taking one here. It can return, in this case, an observable that emits messages. But I'll go to a simpler example first, get blobs. This gets all of the JSON blobs that the web app has access to. It's a procedure that has an input, which is the path that it should be reading. Then as a query, which is the actual function that gets run here. It takes the full path from the path you passed it in. It runs this quick log to let people know what's happening. And then it checks if the path exists. If it doesn't, it should throw an error. We just return empty array now. But if it does, we continue. We call FS promises, which is just a wrapper for FS that is promise friendly. We get our responses. We parse all of these and do some finagling. And then we return the data. 
So here's a more traditional example of a tRPC endpoint. Get files and folders is a procedure that takes in an array of strings that is your path to or from folders. This makes it really easy for us to figure out which folder we should be showing you the contents of. It's a query, which means this is the thing you ask for. It's not a thing that you make changes with, like a mutation. And this is just a function. This can be async. It can be not async. In this case, it appears to not be async. Probably should have been, but we're using read sync, so it's fine. Here's where we actually get the contents of each of these files and folders. What's cool here is I take the RLS things, which is this object I defined here. I return it, and now that type is inferred all the way to the front end. So if I just search for this in our code base, you'll see all the places it's called. In CLI app, dot get files and folders dot use query auto completes and behaves as expected the real magic here is the type inference all of this typing is coming straight from this separate package in my project inferred directly via typescript and v doesn't care it is a simple bundler that allows me to access these things on the other side. That's enough about how this interface works. As I showed briefly before, we also have WebSockets supported through the same interface for showing logs on the client side. But I'm not here to just chill TRPC. You can watch the videos on my channel if you want to hear more about why I love it so much. Because here, TRPC is just how we communicate between the things. I want to show how we actually bundle them. So first, I need to show you how the web app works really briefly. This is going to be a little closer to what y'all are used to. It's a pretty traditional Vite app where I TSC and Vite build for my build. I have my Vite step. I have Lint all the usual stuff here, have a bunch of sub packages, including the captain stuff, which is part of our mono repo. Where things get interesting, though, is the actual build steps, because here I have a custom build path, dist web, and I also have this plugin rewrite all thing. This is an interesting thing I had to do in order to fix the path rewriting when we're accessing things to and from the CLI, because I wanted them both serve from the same port. This allows us to serve our Vite web app as well as our native app in the same place at the same time. This is the only way I could get writing to work between things. And again, the Vite ecosystem is just so good that there are solutions like this already made to solve any of the many different problems I could theoretically run into trying to finagle routing between Vite and my own Fastify-based interface. Actually, on the topic of Fastify, I should have mentioned that before. The actual server that serves both the Vite app and our tRPC endpoints with all of the native code, that's all running inside of Fastify. Fastify is a fantastic alternative to Express that is super performant, very minimal, it's a generally great experience. And as you see here, we're spinning up a Fastify server, in a pretty traditional sense, handling a bunch of core stuff, especially in dev mode, it's a bit annoying. But most importantly, so we scroll down, we register this Fastify tRPC plugin, and then we handle the redirect to the Vite endpoint. So this is if you go to that URL, we wanna make sure we're just using Vite's 5173. But if we're not in dev, we actually grab the static web package that was built by Vite and then serve that as the root here instead. So we still have slash tRPC owned by the tRPC plugin, but the rest of it, is just serving our existing Vite app. But how do we actually get the Vite app here and how do we bundle it all together? Here's where a pretty fun, but admittedly slightly chaotic set of tools comes in. NCC is the key piece here that makes this all come together. If you're not already familiar with NCC, the TLDR is they're trying to do what GCC did, but for Node. It's a project by Vercel because they wanted to make the next JS install not require hundreds of sub dependencies, instead just be one single binary. And NCC will parse all of your Node modules and create a single binary, well, single JavaScript file that doesn't require all those sub-dependencies. It makes it really easy to bundle your stuff and not worry about conflicting dependencies. So if we're using a different version of React or tRPC in our CLI than you are in your project, none of those problems exist because our little bundle is isolated. I thought that was really, really important for a CLI that might be installed in your project, might not be, and I just I didn't want any of the conflicts or potential issues. So NCC is the tool that pulls everything together, but it's not that easy to get things there. I'll show you how we do that now. So as I mentioned, we have the CLI itself here. And this CLI is very important, not just because it's where the Fastify is served, but because this is where our build script is. And yes, I know it's a vanilla JS file. I did not want to deal with transpiling our build step. Anyways, I grab a bunch of these things from FS Promises so that I can read and write the files I need to, as well as resolve, so I can resolve some things later on. I also grab this helpful FS Extra package for a few things that I needed, and then NCC. I get the directories for everything, which is the distribution for the CLI, the index file for the entry point, the web path, which is up to directory, and then CLI web dist web, so it has to be built ahead of time. And then I grab the readme too, so that will be in the package when we ship it. I have to make my own package JSON because for whatever reason, NCC doesn't do this step for me. And I don't want to carry over all the subdependencies and other things in our package JSON. I just want the basics. So I grab these values from the package JSON and then make a new package JSON real quick. 
I also have the run build. This is where most of the hard work comes from. I try to create the indexed HTML. If I succeed, awesome, yay, keep going. If I don't, console error, no indexed HTML, make sure that's built first. Because again, we have to have the build the app ahead of time. I don't want to try and manually trigger that from in the script because Turbo can cache it for me. So I make sure it's there. And if it's not, I throw an error. We then remove the existing distribution directory so that we're not accidentally bundling old files in case a file was renamed or deleted. And then we get started. I create the directory. I copy over the contents from the web directory to a new directory that's a sub here named web. I have all of my options for the actual bundling in NCC, and then it spits out code, map, and assets. To this day, I can't honestly tell you the difference between these things. All I know is I need to write the code in the map traditionally. So code is the core code, the main index.js file, and map is the mappings from that to original source code. But sometimes it can't bundle things in. Like I noticed a lot of the fastify depths couldn't quite go in traditionally. Those all end up coming in through assets. So I have this nasty script at the bottom here for all of assets, where if it's a JSON blob, I skip it because we use those for other things. But otherwise, I write it in as well, because a lot of other dependencies are being bundled in like this. If we look at the distribution that comes out, we have the index.js, which is a big old mess, but it's the vast majority of the code. I have the file.js, because this is one of the things being bundled in from Fastify, as well as a serializer, validator, and all of these things. But the vast majority of the code for this project is just in here. But more importantly, you don't have any dependencies in the resulting output. And once again, the Vite part is all bundled in here. And this will look exactly how you would expect from your traditional Vite app. Holy hell, this is a really cool workflow. The fact that we have a quality local web app using Vite for an SPA that's React based, but we're getting all of the full stack benefits we would from using something like Next with a little bit of custom tooling. Th there is not a tool set that would have made this work better before. I tried, I hunted, I was looking for things to make it easy to build a good web app being served from a CLI that any user could run. And Vite was the obvious solution here. In this app, it's great. I can hit run, immediately get back this error because I'm not running the server. It's supposed to be running this call against. And getting this feedback, having this workflow, having all of this be possible is such a huge selling point of the Vite ecosystem. Without the plugins, the documentation, and the effort Vite put in, I would never have been able to get this to work. And I was certainly not using Vite the way it's expected to be used here. I cannot imagine there are many people combining NCC, Fastify, TRPC, and Vite, but man, is a really powerful combo. The takeaway here isn't meant to be you should go build a CLI using Vite and NCC the exact way I did here, is to encourage you to look into the Vite ecosystem to see how it can solve other problems that you might have. I've always hesitated to do something like a web app in a CLI because the tooling wasn't there. And the tooling isn't there still, but the pieces you need are. And that's the magic of Vite. They have pieces and they have an ecosystem that sets you up to do anything you can imagine. And the things that they're making possible are growing every day. I'm so excited to be part of the Vite community and I will continue using it for crazy stuff like this in the future. Thank you guys as always, really appreciate it. Huge shout out to Patak for inviting me here. I know y'all don't associate me with Vite, but please know I'm a huge fan. If it wasn't for the projects in this ecosystem, I wouldn't be anywhere near as productive as I am today. Thank you all as always. 